last two or three decades. I mean, the, the shift has been towards a small scale. So many donors, you know, many academicians, researchers, they focused more on the small scale irrigation. So the investment uh, was not there as it used to be. Uh, the focus of the national governments was not there for many year, uh, reasons. And, uh, you know, these schemes are also very complex. So you, they need a high level of uh, management capacities because the challenges are big. You are diverting large quantities of water, thousands of kilometers, uh, so many hundreds of structures. So you need to, 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 to look after this infrastructure. And then what happened is that these large-scale irrigation schemes became a little bit relatively neglected. And then as a result, while they are large water users, the water management in this large-scale irrigation schemes deteriorated significantly. Uh, you can imagine like if you see in Pakistan, in the Sind spate irrigation, the, the amount of water, you know, out of the total agricultural water, about 90% is up is being used by this large-scale irrigation scheme in Sudan, 70 to 80 percent is actually consumed by this large irrigation scheme. So they are really big users of water. And if one is to address water management, water security, food security, we cannot anymore neglect these large-scale uh, irrigation schemes. Uh, while, you know, Donors like World Bank, they strongly focused on small-scale irrigation, developing small-scale irrigation schemes. But people, people forget that, you know, this large scale are smallholder irrigation schemes, most of them. So they also benefit so many smallholder farmers and communities. Now, uh, there is a lot of technological advancement. So you have really to make a, a choice, yeah? And we have also learned a lot, I mean, uh, for instance, if we talk about the operation and maintenance, do you still continue with a very manual way of managing these mega irrigation schemes? Or can you introduce some kind of semi-automation while the technology now exists? So how can this be introduced in different phases? You know, these kind of things are new. They were not there in this, uh, before uh, 30 or 20 or uh, uh, more years. Now also we have some experiences like, you know, uh, only the farmers uh, cannot cover this operation and maintenance. So who is going to, to what is the, the, the operation and maintenance arrangement when it comes to financing uh, the operation and maintenance? It is very crucial that we have very clear idea that the operation and maintenance is taken care of properly. And then we should also make a very clear analysis how much of the operation and maintenance could be covered from the farmer's income. Different best or average and under different scenarios. And then who is going to cover the rest? Before we have really made this proper analysis, it's not worthwhile to go on making upgrading, modernization of schemes, and it's just repeating similar cycle like uh, what has been done uh, before. 20, 30 years ago, these schemes were only like for providing food, you know, like, you know, for uh, improving the livelihood. But I think now we look into these schemes as agribusiness schemes. So they have to sustain themselves. They have to generate the income that needs for their operation and maintenance.